All right, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Today, our speaker is, uh, is Mariam, Mariam Shekipa. She is currently uh, a postdoc research associate working with uh, Dr. Al Qadi. And uh, she has obtained her uh, PhD degree from Texas, Texas A&M. And her work was on uh, the investigating the moisture damage on asphalt concrete and then developing micromechanical based micromechanical based models. And uh, she's currently working on uh, sustainability related research projects. Today, her talk is about uh, the effect of poor water pressure, something that we don't really think about too much, but I think it will be an interesting presentation to hear from uh, from her work, I think related to her PhD, PhD thesis. And the title of her presentation is Poor Water Pressure Effect on the Response of Asphalt Concrete Under Coupled Moisture Mechanical Loading. Uh, I would like to welcome Mariam uh, for her presentation. So, hello everybody. As, uh, been introduced. I'm going to talk about the constitutive moisture, coupled moisture mechanical modeling, uh, considering the effect of poor water pressure in asphalt concrete material. So, as we all know, uh, asphalt concrete widely used to construct roads and pavements. Therefore, this material is exposed to uh, cyclic mechanical load uh, due to vehicle loading on the pavement and also environmental condition. One of the most important uh, Environmental condition on the pavement is the moisture, which can be in the form of liquid, rainfall, or relative humidity. This uh, liquid or relative humidity can uh, infiltrate to the asphalt mixture structures and degrade the material properties of uh, the solid phase, which is the mastic, mainly an aggregate, and also it can uh, diffuse and substitute at the aggregate mastic interface and cause the separation. So uh, there are two main approaches modeling the effect of moisture inside the asphalt concrete, which is the micromechanical modeling and macromechanical modeling. The micromechanical modeling mostly they are using a cohesive zone elements to model the interface between aggregate and the mastic. And for the macromechanical modeling, usually they introduced an internal state variable, which is the moisture damage variable, and then they propose relationship for them. For uh, mostly these uh, relationship, uh, for example, in the cohesive zone element, they are assuming that the uh, strength uh, at this uh, cohesive zone element is decreasing as a function of moisture content. And also, for example, for uh, the macromechanical modeling, they are assuming, proposing a relationship for this moisture damage variable as a function of just moisture content. These are not realistic because uh, these models cannot consider the effect of a uh, fixed level of moisture content. So to time, a fixed level of moisture content still can uh, degrade the material properties. And also these models are irreversible. So if uh, upon drawing, the whole uh, degraded uh, stiffness and uh, strength of the material recovered uh, with drawing of the material. So uh, to improve these models, Abu al and Graham, they proposed an evolution function for the moisture damage variable. So this evolution function will solve two problems. It, now we, uh, it's, it is a time-dependent model. So at a fixed uh, moisture level content, uh, the material still degrades through time. And uh, it is irreversible. So the material cannot obtain back its strength uh, to draw it. But still, this model is not history dependent. It cannot consider the history of uh, moisture and mechanical damage in the asphalt pavement. And it hasn't been uh, validated through experimental data. And there are tons of works considering the degradation of the material in composite and other porous media. So, and uh, we know that asphalt concrete is a rate and temperature dependent material which shows uh, viscoelastic, viscoplastic damage healing behavior. Therefore, uh, PANDA, which is a pavement analysis using nonlinear damage approach, has been developed to consider all these complex uh, beha mechanical behavior of asphalt concrete, mechanical language. So in PANDA, we have used the Shapri's nonlinear theory to model the viscoelasticity, Perzina to model the viscoplasticity, and the model by Darabi et al. to consider the healing 
and mechanical risk of damage of asphalt concrete. So the missing, uh, typical the missing chain here, uh, part of Panda is the environmental condition, which is moisture damage. This uh, moisture damage should be coupled to the other mechanical response of asphalt concrete and also uh, should consider the history and time dependency which is uh, missing from the previous model. Therefore, an evolution function has been proposed to consider the moisture damage model. This model is uh, the continuum damage mechanic uh, framework extended to continuum moisture mechanical damage mechanics to consider the coupling between moisture damage effect and mechanical behavior of asphalt concrete. Uh, the model is applicable to both micro and macro scale. It's a physically based uh, constitutive equation. It can consider the effects of time and history, and it can consider the effects of pore water pressure. So what is moisture damage? Moisture damage is a complex phenomenon which is happening through asphalt concrete through different mechanisms. The thermodynamic phenomenon, which is when moisture diffusing through the asphalt uh, mix, uh, substitution of water at the aggregate mastic interface is a thermodynamically favorable phenomenon. So once moisture diffuses and infiltrates through the mixture, it substitutes at the interface, cause the separation of the aggregate from the mastic. Also a chemical, just the diffusion of the moisture through mastic itself, it's a viscoelastic material due to time some chemical reactions happening and the properties of the mastic degrades with moisture. And uh, inside the asphalt uh, mix, there are interconnected uh, macro pores and cracks. Then we have saturated interconnected crack and voids and traffic loading on the pavement, it will cause a fast flow of water through this interconnected crack and void. The flow of water causes the, the washing away of the mastic from its surface, which is the physical phenomenon. And then the mechanical, again, when we have the saturated crack and voids, and the uh, traffic loading on the pavement, this water wants to escape uh, from this crack and void. It will induce some extra pressure on its surrounding. This extra pressure uh, cause more mechanical damage on the pavement. So uh, to consider the effect of moisture, first uh, we have uh, extended the continuum damage mechanic approach to continue moisture mechanical damage mechanics in order to couple our moisture damage model to the rest of mechanical behavior of the material. So here we can assume that there is a specimen which we are applying some mechanical load and also it is moisture conditioned. Therefore, there are some uh, mechanical damage evolved in the material, some crack and pores, and also the conditioning uh, degraded the properties of the specimen. So we are assuming that the transferring this uh, configuration, which is the realistic nominal wet damage configuration, to the configuration which removing all the mechanical uh, degraded uh, cracks, uh, the crack and voids due to mechanical loading from this configuration. And we will have this wet on damage fictitious configuration with the cross-sectional area of A cap and then we are again assuming that we are transferring this to some effective dry on damage configuration by, uh, by removing the degradation of the material due to moisture. So the last one is the effective intact portion of the material. And then the applied load on all these specimens are the same, defining the damage variables. We will obtain this uh, coupling relationship between uh, the moisture and mechanical damage variables, and the relationship between the stress in the nominal configuration sigma and sigma bar, which is the effective stress in the effective configuration. Then uh, we have used the thermodynamic based formulation to develop a constitutive relationship for the moisture damage. So again, asphalt concrete is a composite material consists of aggregate, mastic, and air voids. The water diffuses through the solid part, and also it can flow through interconnected crack and voids. So for the thermodynamic formulation, we have assumed that the material uh, consists of uh, three phases, solid, which is the aggregate and mastic uh, together, and uh, gas and the liquid. 
the liquid is divided in two parts to consider all the um, moisture phenomena happen happening in the asphalt concrete. The moisture inside the solid part, which uh, is the moisture concentration equal to the degree of saturation of the solid part to the maximum moisture uptake that the uh, solid part can have. And the moisture content inside the crack and void, which is the degree of saturation times the porosity of the material. I'm going through this formulation very fast. So we have used the principle of virtual power, which is stated that the internal uh, virtual power is equal to the external power supplied to the material. From here, we have obtained a balance equation for the three phases of liquid, solid, and gas phase. And then uh, it developed the first law of thermodynamics, second law for this uh, composite material. Putting the first law in the second law, we obtain the clusters to home inequality. And assuming the Helmholtz free energy is internal energy minus temperature times entropy. And just briefly, we have used the Ziegler approach, which uh, divided the conjugate forces to energetic and dissipative part. We have obtained the, and then using the maximum rate of energy dissipation, we have obtained the evolution function, a constitutive equation for the moisture damage variable which is phi dot equal to k theta 1 minus phi sxt to the power of t. So theta here is the moisture content. k is our moisture damage fluidity parameter. This parameter controls the rate of degradation of the material. 1 minus uh, phi effective is the coupling term to the mechanical damage. And also, it can consider the history. And q is the history parameter. So this model is time dependent. It can consider the degradation of the material at a constant, at a fixed level of the moisture. Also, it can consider the irreversibility. So upon drawing, the strength and the stiffness of the material doesn't recover. And also, it can consider the effect of history uh, of what happened before mechanical and other moisture damages. I will show some example to see the capabilities of the model. And then the effect of poor weather pressure. So as I told, when we have the saturated cracks and voids, and we have the traffic loading on the pavement, this water wants to escape from these uh, micropores. It will induce some extra stresses on the mastic, will cause more mechanical damage. And then the more mechanical damage causes more diffusion and then uh, infiltration of the moisture to the interface. For this purpose, we revise the constitutive equation for the stress strain, which is the nonlinear visco, the shape free viscoelasticity theory, uh, with considering the effect of poor water pressure. So here, this one, yeah, just simply, it is so similar to the effective stress concept in the soil mechanics. Just the material here is viscoelastic. So the material, we have used a very simple linear function here. And the material property is the BOT coefficient, which we, has been introduced for the effect of uh, poor water pressure for viscoelastic material. So to consider this, we should solve the force balance equation, this uh, revised stress strain constitutive equation, and the mass balance equation, and ours is allowed to consider the flow of the moisture effect inside the material. This is just a schematically will show how the poor water pressure will cause the increase in the rate of uh, evolution of the damage density. So I'm going to show some example to show the capabilities of the model. Just to recap uh, what is the, this model is capable of, it, is, it can be applied to both macro and micro scale of asphalt concrete modeling. It can consider the adhesive, which is the separation of the aggregate from the mastic. And also, it can consider the cohesive damage, which is the degradation of the mastic itself. It has been implemented in PANDAS. So it's coupled to the mechanical viscoelastic, viscoplastic, visco damage behavior of asphalt. The model is time and history dependent and can consider the effect of poor water pressure. So uh, it is applicable to micro scale. 
So we have used this 2D micro structural representation of asphalt concrete material to show the capability of the model. And we have used the fixed law to simulate the moisture diffusion to the mastic, uh, which is theta dot equal to D dot plus n of theta. D is the moisture diffusivity. And for this figure, uh, we have assumed that the normalized moisture content is equal to 1 on top of the model and equal to half on the lateral sides to kind of representing a rainy day, which we have normalized moisture content on the pavement equal to 1, and it's decreasing to the left. And then after moisture conditioning the material, a mechanical load has been applied on top of the pavement, and this figure shows the mechanical damage evolution through the pavement. So here we can see how mechanical damage concentrated on top and also lateral side. This is because the moisture already degraded the material at this part. So this figure shows that the model can predict the separation of the aggregates from the mastic and the stripping of the asphalt. Also, a very quick example for the applicability to macro scale. Here we have assumed the moisture content equal to 1 on top of the pavement. Moisture is diffusing, and this is the mechanical uh, damage evolving in the pavement. OK, I thought that uh, the model is a, can predict both adhesive and cohesive degradation of the pavement. We have obtained an evolution function, this one, from uh, the thermodynamic-based formulation. But we have assumed that we can use this model for both adhesive and cohesive uh, degradation by considering different material uh, parameters, this case for the adhesive and the cohesive one. Because uh, experimental results show that uh, asphalt concrete is so susceptible to adhesive failure. So, for example, this K assumed the uh, bigger value for the adhesive failure. For this uh, microstructure representation, it uh, consists of aggregates and the mastic. A weight hasn't been considered in this one, and a very narrow uh, element around the aggregate has been assumed as the interface, and the adhesive material properties are assigned to that narrow element. And uh, it has the same boundary condition for the moisture diffusion from the top and lateral surfaces. And the contour shows the adhesive and cohesive moisture damage evolution to the material. So you can see that model can predict a concurrent and independent uh, evolution of the adhesive and cohesive damage inside the material. So in this way, we can. Uh, predict the failure of the asphalt concrete when uh, it has a very susceptible uh, adhesive uh, bond between the aggregate and the and, and uh, mastic while uh, the strength of the mastic is high. So the model is time and history dependent. To show this capability of the model, we uh, exposed uh, some model to cycles of moisture diffusion, saturation, mm -hmm. and then drying. So the moisture uh, infiltrates through the material, completely saturated the material, and then drying, keep it uh, dry for some time, and again uh, put some other moisture on, it, on the material. So the red dotted line here shows the behavior of the linear function. So the moisture damage variable in those models increase with increase of the moisture content inside the material. When moisture content level is uh, constant, the moisture damage variable is constant. And then upon drawing, these models show full recovery of the moisture damage variable. And then in the second cycle, same thing is happening, which is not a true assumption. And the blue line shows the behavior of this evolution function. So with increase in the moisture content, the moisture damage variable increase with a high rate. And then at a constant moisture content, which is here, we still have increase in the moisture damage variable. 
And then when we have the drawing, the moisture damage variable remain constant. And the second uh, cycle, you can see that the, from here, the moisture damage variable starts increasing, but the rate of increase decreased in the second cycle, which is physically makes sense. Uh, because, the, for example, the potential available interface to degrade decreased, also, for example, uh, the crack and voids uh, evolve through the material, which will cause the flow of the water out of the material and not to diffuse through the material to decrease the asphalt. And then uh, one example to show the effect of pore water pressure, a very, very simple RBE has been made here which consists of uh, this time aggregate, a very narrow element around the aggregate as the interface between aggregate and mastic, mastic and also the air voids. So uh, these movies show the first one is the deviatoric stress, then we don't have any air void in the model. The second one is we have the air void, we don't have pore water pressure. And the last one shows how pore water pressure effect caused the concentration of the stress all around these air voids. I don't know why it's not keeping itself. And uh, the bottom figure shows the distribution of damage. So again, we can see how it uh, causes damage to concentrate all around this air void. And also, I should uh, emphasize again, this air void is completely saturated from the first step. So again, just the concentration of the esters and also causing the damage to be concentrated and also infiltrate to the interface. For calibration, we have used the pull-off test result to uh, obtain the model parameters, material properties for our micro-mechanical analysis. So uh, the available uh, experimental data, they are using the pull-off test, which is adhering a very thin layer of mastic on the aggregate. And then they are putting this aggregate in the water bath uh, to, and let the water to diffuse at different, uh, for different time. And then they are just uh, applying a co uh, constant displacement rate, uh, tension, on, on a metal full of stop and then just pulling this apart. And then uh, measuring the ultimate strength of this aggregate mastic bond strength. So from the continuum damage mechanics part, we can solve the and find our damage variable, which is one minus the bond strength at the conditioning time that they tested and to the dry ultimate strength. And then uh, we have solved the uh, six second law to obtain the moisture content at the aggregate mastic interface. Knowing uh, the moisture content and also this uh, damage variable, we can solve this equation to obtain K and Q for different moisture conditioning time. Uh, and most of these experiments just uh, stated that the failure was an adhesive failure. So what we could get from this experiment was the K adhesive and Q adhesive. And these are the results, uh, one sample of the results. This is the bond strength and uh, for different uh, combination of the mastic and aggregate for different conditioning time. So you can see that the model can predict the degradation of the bond strength which increase in moisture conditioning time. And another thing which is interesting here is that history effect. So the rate of decrease is high first, and then the, this rate decreasing. Which model can consider with that history parameter in it? And then uh, for the continuum level, we have used a mixture, a tension test on a mixture to kind of finding the material uh, parameter K and Q as an average for the continuum scale modeling. So we have used the modified Lachman procedure without the freezing to condition the specimen. 
for different conditioning time and then conducting the uniaxial tension and constant strain ratio. Again, we can use this equation to find the moisture damage variable. Theta is constant this time. We are saturating the specimen till some level. So we can solve this equation to obtain some average K and Q for the whole mixture. And this is the calibration result for the tension test, for the experiment at dry, and also 12 hours conditioning time. Then uh, for the validation, it is the same procedure of the modified uh, Lotzman conditioning. And we have used the repeated creep recovery test at various resting time under tension for the dry and also moisture conditions. And this figure could show that the model can predict the result of this repeated creep recovery. And another test is repeated creep recovery, this time various loading level under compression and temperature is 55. Again, for the dry and moisture conditioned cases, you can see the result. Finally, some parametric studies has been done to show the capabilities of the model. This is the pavement performance. These figures shows the viscoplastic strain at dry states and uh, also after three days of uh, moisture uh, diffusing from top of the specimen. So first, this figure shows how the model can predict the increase of rotting when we have moisture conditioning. Rotting is the permanent deformation of the asphalt concrete. And these figures are the contours for the viscoplastic uh, strain. We can see that the, the maximum viscoplastic strain, the contour is shifting upward. This is because the effect of moisture damage, because the material is degraded on the surface, so it will cause this accumulation of the viscoplastic strain to go to be closer to the surface of the asphalt pavement. And also though that discontinuity in the contour is because of the type of moving load that we are applying. So it's not completely continuous, it's just uh, removing and putting it again with half overlapping. And then again, uh, some micromechanical simulations. These are the results of 2D. Uh, and then the, the RVE has exposed to water on top and also lateral side, and then the mechanical load applied on top of the specimen. So the diagram shows the, how with increase of the moisture conditioning time, the ultimate strength and also the stiffness modulus decreased with this increase. And also this uh, shows the contours for the mechanical damage variable. You can see at the dry condition, the distribution of the mechanical uh, damage through the specimen is kind of uniform, but with increase of the moisture conditioning time, these uh, contours are concentrating on top and lateral sides because the material is all, already degraded at this place. And then this is uh, just one example of the 3D micromechanical simulation. So the moisture is uh, diffusing from the top surface. So figure shows the moisture damage. With increase of the time, the moisture diffuses more to the specimen and so degraded more, bigger portion of the material. And then the mechanical damage, again, we can see the, at dry condition, we have kind of uniform distribution of the mechanical damage, and then the mechanical damage is concentrating on top. These figures can show that model can predict the separation of the aggregates from the mastic during the wet season. And these uh, figures are at this uh, strain level, which is 0.67%. And again, ultimate strength decreasing for with increase of the moisture conditioning. So just some movies to show the moisture diffusion through this uh, 3D micromechanic and also the mechanical damage. And then uh, we have uh, conducted some parametric study to see the effect of 
different, uh, for example, the percentage of the air voids on the pore water pressure, the position and angle of this one. <coughs> for example, here, this is going to considering the effect of the position of these uh, air voids, the angle of it. So these figures shows how the angle and position of the air voids can uh, cause uh, different distribution of the mechanical damage and also infiltration of the damage to the interface, to different places at the interface. So for example, at the first one, to cause kind of concentration at this place. See here. Second one, it will cause the concentration at this interface. So the mechanical damage it's kind of, it will cause more moisture infiltration and also damage at this interface. And then here we can see how it will cause the infiltration of the damage at that interface. So those were very simple microstructural representation to obtain insight uh, to the microstructural behavior, and for the small one, we could uh, consider the interface degradation, the adhesive damage. These are the much more realistic 2D microstructural representation of asphalt concrete. The only point is here, we don't have the interface because of the computational cost. We couldn't define the at narrow elements around the aggregate. So these figures shows the deviatoric stress when we have and when we don't have for water pressure. And then this is the same model. This is the deviatoric damage distribution and then how damage, you can see here, concentrating all around the air wood. and it will completely change the pattern of distribution of damage to the material. So conclusion is the model has been uh, developed based on thermodynamic formulation. So it physically makes sense. It's obtained based on physics, so it doesn't contradict the thermodynamics, which is actually those linear function, it's really interesting. When I have tried to obtain those linear function based on my thermodynamics, they contradict physics. And it was really interesting. And then uh, it can recognize the susceptibility of the aggregate mastic and the mastic itself, so can consider both adhesive and cohesive failure. The, it is coupled to all mechanical response of asphalt concrete. The model itself is time and history dependent. It can consider the failure pattern at, and it can consider the effect of poor water pressure. I think my laptop is dying. And then some just recommendation is that we, I didn't consider the effect of mastic washing away from the surface due to flow of the water. This uh, should be considered in the modeling. Also, it would be really interesting to consider these effects of air voids in a 3D micromechanical model and simulate to see the effect of pore water pressure. And also the, the numerical implementation of pore water pressure can be revised and enhanced, actually. So these are my references. Thank you very much for your attention and any questions. No question. Yes. I'd be curious to see a little bit more work on the orientation of the air voids, and you were showing that you had different concentrations yeah. um, about the interface, because I would suspect that it has little to do with the actual orientation of the air voids and probably more to do with the proximity of the air void to the interface. Um, when you're changing the orientation of the air mm -hmm. void, do you end up pivoting? the air void about the closest point, because then you would maintain the same proximity 
between the two. Yeah, that's true. But at the same time, for example, the shape, this, the concentration are at the ends of, for example, the avoid. So when it's concentrated, it causes more concentration of the estrus and also more damage. So yeah, I think it's, it is proximity and also the orientation, both of them. So it's a combination of the, all these anything uh, characteristics of the avoid will cause the different uh, distribution of the mechanical damage. Including volume. Yeah, I told that the avoid percentage is really important. Too. That should be considered. Yeah. I was curious, what kind of uh, mechanical testing was done to with the validation? Uh, what do you mean? Which tests were think. run in, on the actual specimens to, with the validation? So for the validation, the creep recovery test, I told various resting oh. and yeah, for the moisture conditions, I had these two various resting time and various loading level for the dry and moisture condition cases. And it's a ceramic color system. What did the, the orange like these are? Or was it the creep recovery? The, the, the creep. I, I don't know exactly. Okay. Is that the multiple it's, stress creep recovery? I think it's a, yeah. yeah so it applies multiple level of stresses, load, recovery. What's the physical size of the specimen? Normal, like normal uh, E-star sample, yeah. Yeah, as far as I know. Yeah, it's a, yeah it is the, just yeah. the normal yeah. sizes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So you have now the micromechanical model, mm -hmm. and you have your payment simulation okay. in, the, in, the, in, the, in the global macro level domain, in global, global domain size. How do you now translate the information that you obtain in the micromechanical level what kind of information that you use, that you get from micromechanical level, and then in the macro and Actually, global level? No, we are just using the micromechanical modeling to get the insight into the model, but uh, it's not actual micromechanic macro scale modeling, which is gaining something and then linking it to the next level and then going to the next level. No, it hasn't so been done. So you use micromechanical model just to prove the concept of using thermodynamic both moisture damage, microstructural effects. And also to get inside what is happening. Okay. So, yeah, we can investigate the different, uh, this excessive cohesive one, which is how it behaves to the material and also, yeah, any, the percentage of the aggregate and these things to get insight have, into that. Do you have variables, internal variables mm -hmm. that you call from your... Uh, model, right? Yeah. And those those variables, they, you are using them also in the in the in the global micro level simulations. Yes, we are using it in a continual level simulation because they are obtaining actually from the mixture level. So okay. the mixture level is kind of giving the average uh, representative of those material properties. So as I told, for example, for the for the adhesive for the moisture that uh, pull-off test can show us the, the material properties at the micro scale. But uh, in continuous scale, we just uh, conducting the experiment on the mixture and just uh, getting the average representative of those model parameters for the continuous scale and using it to simulate the pavement performance. Okay. Another question. I might have missed the initial part of the presentation, but when you call this pore water pressure, mm -hmm. finding, uh, you know, <coughs> representing this analogy between the stuff that we learn in soil mechanics, you are not really talking about the pore water pressure, right? Just the <coughs> presence of water and affecting the physical properties, and that there is no really pressure that you account affected by the pore water in the mix. Uh, I can't understand. Yeah, because if I think it can be considered because it's a saturated pore. And then when we have the mechanical loading, it will cause some extra stress. You don't account for the presence of water and how much stress or pressure is exerted by the water to find the effective stress. You find effective stresses by subtracting the amount of damage occurring in this presence. It's not like the same, you know, yeah. no, 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 suction. No, definitely not suction. Suction, it makes yeah. it much more complicated. And also here, I didn't simulate the flow of the water. 
matter. So I assume that this is completely saturated. It's completely saturated, or you are saturating what you are I'm saturating, saturating it and then applying the mechanical load on the head. So it will have some extra stress on the surround. In that case, are there any other questions? That's it. So I'm going to thank Maryam for the presentation.